Hey everyone, now I will discuss about approach to a child with polyuria. To start from definition, polyuria is defined as an increase in total daily output of urine and we say polyuria is there is urine output more than 40 ml per kg per 24 hour or more than 2000 ml per meter square per 24 hour. This is more than around 1 liter per 24 hour in preschool children and in school children it is around more than 2 liter per 24 hour and in adults it is more than 3 liter per 24 hour. Polyuria is different from frequency of urination, nocturia and the neuresis which are not associated with an increase in the total urine output. The volume of urine depends upon the amount of solute and water ingested or produced by metabolism in excess of needs and the ability to concentrate or dilute the urine. The ability to concentrate the urine depends on the presence of antidiuretic hormone and a hyperosmolar medullary interstitium with an intact countercurrent multiplier system. When we see the etiology of polyuria, polydipsia is defined as water intake of more than 100 ml per kg per day in children and around 6 liters per day and above that in adults. And there are four mechanisms which can cause polyuria and one or more of this will be operating. The first one is increased intake of fluid as in psychogenic causes, stress and anxiety, increased glomerular filtration rate as in hyperthyroidism, fever and hypermetabolic states, and also increased output of solute as occurs in DM, hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, and also use of diuretics uh, which present more solute at the distal convoluted tubule, and also inability of the kidney to reabsorb water in the distal convoluted tubule as in the central and the, uh, nephrogenic diabetes and speedus and also chronic renal failure. When we encounter such patients, we should have to ask the following in, on, in our history. Is it increased the volume of urine or just increased frequency of urination? Is there associated polydipsia? Is there weight loose? Is there family history of DM or diabetes and speedus? Any history of neurosurgery, meningitis, head injury or psychiatric illness? And also any history of drug use such as diuretics, lithium, analgesics, vitamin D, hypercalcemia, and nephrotoxic drugs. Any history of recurrent infection as in DM, and also history of hypertension, CKD, hypercalcemia, urinary tract obstruction, and also polystickling disease. On physical examination, we should have to check the following. We should have to ascertain wasting or cachexia as occurs in DM and the diabetes in spirits and also malignancy. And also we should have to look for skin manifestation as in the malignancy and also DM. Examination of nails for clubbing, CKD nails and the carcinoma of bronchus, and also anemia as occurs in CKD and the malignancy. And also we should have to look for lymphadenopathy as in infiltrative disorder and the malignancy. And also fundus examination DM and hypertension for papilledema. Uh, regarding etiological classification of polyuria, there can be endocrine causes such as DM. Uh, diabetes and speedus, Cushingoid syndromes, and also renal causes such as chronic renal failure, relief of urinary tract obstruction, and chronic pyronephrites, and also Fanconi syndrome, nephrogenic diabetes and speedus, iatrogenic causes such as diuretic therapy, alcohol, lithium, tetracycline, and also metabolic causes such as hypercalcemia, potassium depletion, and psychological and psychiatric disorders and other causes such as sickle cell anemia, pulmonary and systemic venous thrombolism. So any one of those things can cause polyuria. And from this, when we see diabetes and cepedes, there are two types of diabetes and cepedes, central and nephrogenic. And the central diabetes and cepedes is due to abnormality and also decrement in antidiuretic hormone. And the lack of antidiuretic hormone production and or secretion might be partial or complete and usually in this case the urine volume is very high and polydipsia is usually a feature and is very trivial so any disturbance or injury of the hypothalamus and or pituitary is a potential cause and it might be due to geopathic cause trauma neoplasia cysts and also inflammations the second types of diabetes cepedes is nephrogenic diabetes cepedes and this occurs due to non-response of the kidneys to antidiuretic hormone. It can be congenital or acquired. And from the congenital one, V2 vasopressin receptor mutations are known and the most common one. 
and 90% of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is genetic and only 10% is acquired. The acquired cause of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus can be mainly due to hypokalemia and hypercalcemia, which is electrolyte abnormality, bilateral urinary tract obstruction, lithium therapy, and also acute renal failure and advanced chronic renal failure. The polyura of acquired nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is of moderate degree, unlike that of the uh, central diabetes insipidus. The other is primary polydipsia, and this occurs due to suppression of antidiuretic hormone by excessive fluid intake, like in dipsogenic, psychogenic, or iatrogenic causes, like excessive water drinking, which is prescribed as a treatment. And this is usually acquired and mostly idiopathic. Sometimes it might be due to chronic meningitis, granulomatous disease, multiple sclerosis, and other diffuse pathology of the brain and the psychiatric illness. Some also add additional types of diabetes insipidus, which, which happens during the pregnancy. It is called gestagenic diabetes insipidus, and it occurs in pregnancy due to destruction of antidiuretic hormone by placental vasopressinase. Uh, the other is nocturnal polyuria. Nocturnal polyuria is a disorder of the circadian rhythm in antidiuretic hormone secretion. There will be an increase in natriuretic peptides arterial natriuretic peptide and the brain natriuretic peptide and the measurements of plasma antidiuretic hormone and the urinary antidiuretic hormone will clinch the diagnosis so in this case there is increased in plasma and the urinary antidiuretic hormone during the night time and the urinary antidiuretic hormone to urine creatinine ratio is a good laboratory test to pick up uh, the nocturnal polyuria due to defective antidiuretic hormone secretion. To make it simple, let's see an algorithmic approach to the diagnosis of polyuria. There is a three-step algorithm for evaluation of a case of polyuria. And the first one is when we encounter a patient who is complaining of having polyuria, uh, first the 24-hour urine volume should be measured. And if it is less than 3 liters or less than 40 ml per kg per day, it is not a case of polyuria. And if the 24-hour urine volume is more than 40 ml per kg per day, then we need to measure the urine osmolarity. If the urine osmolarity is more than 300 ml per kg, it indicates solute diuresis and the underlying cause will be either diabetes mellitus or CKD, and the evaluation must be directed to those things. Uh, on the other hand, if the urine osmolarity is less than 300 ml per kg, then we do a fluid deprivation test. During the next 12 hour period, all fluid intake is stopped. And at the end of 12 hours of fluid deprivation, we need to measure urine osmolarity, serum ADH, renal function, and the serum sodium. After fluid deprivation, normally the urine osmolarity must increase to greater than 750 mLs more per kg. If this is so, and if the serum sodium and ADH are reduced and the renal function is normal, it confirms. Uh, primary polydipsia or some psychogenic causes. On the other hand, if the serum sodium and ADH are normal and the renal function tests are abnormal, it indicates CKD or nephrogenic diabetes insipidus or hypercalcemia. The other scenarios, if it does not increase greater than 750 ml more per kg after 12 hours of fluid deprivation, it tells us the presence of diabetes insipidus. And then we give exogenous vasopressin to help distinguish central from nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. In central diabetes insipidus, there is a deficiency of ADH, and in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, ADH is available, but there is lack of response by the kidney. So, if a patient responds to exogenous vasopressin, it is central, and if it is not responding, it is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So, to easily summarize by table, First, when a patient comes with a complaint of polyuria, we should have to quantify or determine 24-hour urine volume. And if it is less than 3 liters or less than 40 ml per kg per day, it's not a case of polyuria. And if it is more than 3 liters or more than 40 ml per kg per day, we should have to do urine osmolarity first. If urine osmolarity is uh, more than 300 ml per kg, it is either ADM or CKD. And if urine osmolarity is less than 300, it is either 
diabetes insipidus or primary polydipsia so we should have to do fluid deprivation and in the case of uh, primary polydipsia on the fluid deprivation urine osmolality raised to more than 750 millions mole per kg whereas in the case of diabetes insipidus uh, urine osmolality doesn't rise and then we give exogenous vasopressin and if it responds to exogenous vasopressin it is uh, central diabetes insipidus and if it's not responding it is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so after that we should have to search for the possible cause of diabetes insipidus whether it is nephrogenic or central it might also need imaging like MRI in the case of central one so this is all about approach to a child with polyuria thank you for your attention